Roadhouse, released March 21, 2024, released on Amazon Prime, directed by Doug Lyman, written by Anthony Bagarazzi, Charles Mondry, and Chuck Mondry, starring Jake Gyllenhaal, Rotten Tomatoes score, 67%, Metacritic score, 58 Welcome back to Real Reviews Like Always. I am your host, Lee. Today we are reviewing the remake of Roadhouse. Actually, remake might be the wrong word. This is a retelling, different lead with a slightly different name, the bar has a different name, and it is in a different location. Weirdly actually, maybe not weirdly, but I think Jake Gyllenhaal is a more enjoyable character than that of Patrick Swayze. He has more range, better facial expressions, and while he is supposed to still be this cool-headed calm character like we see in the original, he shows a caring side that really went missing from the 1989 version. Arturo Castro is probably one of the best supporting actors, just a nice, delightful henchman for the bad guy. Conor McGregor plays something close to a lunatic, which is again a breath of fresh air when compared to Marshall Teague in the 1989 version. I am not going to comment on the story a whole lot because it is basically the same as the original. Tough guy hired to save a bar that has been invaded by the wrong type of clientele, the bad guy is trying to get it to close to buy it, by having his rough bikers ruin it. Dalton goes in and not only makes it safer, but also trains others to be competent and builds a community. Bad guy hires a bigger badass to try to deal with Dalton after several failed attempts by his normal goons to solve the problem. We get some callbacks to the original, like the band behind a fence because the crowd has the tendency to throw beer bottles at them. If you have seen the 1989 version, you will know all the story beats, so don't expect to be shocked by anything. There is this really odd scene where the bar is chill and fine, until Conor McGregor A.K. Knox walks in and starts wrecking the place, then random patrons yell bar fight and just start punching people. Later in the same scene they show some of the goons there, and if they had shown them starting the bar fight that would have been fine, but this mess with random people just felt so out of place. At least the band kept playing, I guess. There is one thing that I really wish this movie didn't bother with, and it is the computer-generated vehicles for certain scenes. They are bad, like maybe a few steps above out-of-date video game assets that aren't blended correctly with their environment. Another weird thing is that a few times they just drop jokes at odd times, and they aren't even really funny jokes. In the end, this movie shoots to be a modern 80s movie, and it doesn't fail at that. While I don't like it, that is mostly just because it isn't for me. It wasn't a bad movie, and if you like the original, I would recommend you see this one. Overall, I think the reviewers are about right a 5.5 out of 10 would be my score for this one. If you made it all the way through, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed, make sure to like and subscribe. Next week, I am reviewing Godzilla X Kong and Three Body Problem. I have watched the episodes available for X-Men 97 but won't review it until it is complete.